Hi, my name is John with Mark 7 Reloading, and today we're going to be going over setup and operation of the pneumatic bullet dropper and 16 inch bullet collator for Titan. Let's get started. Moving on to setting our pneumatic bullet dropper. We're gonna start with our die. This is a 338 die in my hand, which is denoted by the number eight engraved on the side. We're gonna start by threading it in just a little bit. We're gonna take an appropriate case, 338 Lapua Magnum, place it underneath the die, and perform a move to bottom. We can now thread this die down until we meet resistance and back it off one half of a turn after. I feel the die engaging the case, backed off roughly a half turn, and secure the die lock nut. Now that our die is secured, we can install our pneumatic bullet dropper assembly. Quick note here before I install it, be mindful of your bullet sense uh, laser and your rod here. We can't have the dropper die be directly above it when we install, off to the side, or off to the side like this is fine. I'm gonna go off to the side right here so we have better view of what's going on on the tool head. Using a 330 seconds, we're going to first make sure that we are seated correctly on the die, which we are, and we can secure these three set screws with a 330 seconds Allen to secure the dropper assembly to the die body. Just snugging these up is fine. We shouldn't be able to remove the dropper should be pretty solidly attached to the die. First thing we're gonna do is set our adapter height to match up with the projectile we're using. The adapter is used as a gate or guard to prevent the bullet above the projectile we're loading from sliding out. So the goal is to set our gate height, or sorry, our adapter height, so that is as low as possible while still allowing clearance of our projectile to slide out through it. I have my adapter loose here, move up and down. I'm gonna put my projectile in the dropper and I'm gonna visually look through my slit here until it is set correctly. We're gonna be set pretty low here. You may have to change your adapter depending on your projectile selection as the adapters are gonna be different, have different cutouts to match up with the variety of projectiles for that given caliber. We have our gate locked in with our two set screws set to the correct height. I can now manually actuate the ram, the solenoid that slides the projectile forward with an Allen wrench on the back of the dropper assembly. If you're facing the dropper like I am, the right hand button located on top right here actuates the ram and the left hand, if you're facing it like I am, actuates the seat rod that comes down from up top. Allow me to demonstrate the seat rod now. And I'm gonna manually actuate the ram. And the bullet drops out. You can use these manual actuations to test function and unload the dropper, or you can use the unload function in the HMI under the configure tab on the right hand side. Adjustment of our seat rod solenoid. This is our solenoid and this is our adjustment. A little thumb wheel to adjust the placement of this solenoid. How far seated your projectile is with this assembly will be determined by your setting of the solenoid height as well as the pressure going from the regulator to the bullet dropper. We recommend starting backed off pretty far, meaning solenoid higher by just turning this thumb wheel to start with, you can always seat it deeper. As I rotate this, you can see the solenoid moving up higher. Now that we've set our gate, we know the ram moves back and forth freely and allows the projectile to move. We can now tune our pre-seat depth with these 338 Lapua Magnum uh, projectiles and case. Let's do that now. Now that we have projectiles in the dropper, we can test the pre-seat depth of our current settings and adjust from there. I'm gonna make sure my bullet dropper is enabled on my HMI. I'm at a lower speed, I have air to everything. I'm gonna do a single cycle. I can now evaluate if this pre-seat is looking good to me. 
got a firm uh, installation. We could probably go a little bit deeper on the pre-seat just to make sure we don't have any issues with clearance of the dies. Next up, we're gonna set the case proximity sensor, which is the shorter of the two sensors here by the bullet dropper station. This is a laser emitter and it also detects reflection of laser light. So all, all we're gonna do is place our case under the bullet dropper, make sure our laser is hitting the case. And then we're gonna adjust the gain further away from the sensor to make sure it picks up the case no matter what. So I can remove this case from the station and I'm going to follow the line of sight out to about here. And I'm gonna use a small flathead screwdriver to adjust this flathead screw. If I back it off, we see the red light disappear, turn off. And if I tighten it again, it turns back on. I'm going to tighten it until the red light is illuminated, hitting the case further away from the station, about three inches or the opposite side of the shell plate. So now when I replace the case back in the bullet dropper station, the laser hits, we see the laser emit, uh, or sorry, the light uh, illuminate, saying that it sees the laser reflection on the case and it recognizes the case is there, it should operate. Let's go ahead and make an adjustment to our seat rod and seating depth so we can get that projectile seated a little bit deeper. We're gonna adjust our seat rod solenoid so that we lower it a little bit more. There we go. Let's, we got projectile loaded. Case proximity sensor is working. We'll just do a single cycle and see where we end up. Next up, we're gonna set our bullet detection laser, which is the other laser here in this bank. We have a, a projectile preceded. We're gonna rotate the laser until it is centered on the lower third of the shank of the bullet. Then using a small flathead screwdriver, we're going to slowly rotate until the light goes out on the sensor. And then we're going to rotate it back until the light illuminates plus a small amount, less than a quarter turn additional. This sensor acts to confirm that the bullet has been seated and uh, would stop the machine if the bullet is not present. If you experience issues with your bullet seating appropriately and staying put on the case, there are a few things you can check. You can attempt to seat deeper by adjusting your uh, bullet seat solenoid. You can increase the pressure up to 100 PSI on your regulator. You can also ensure that your brass is of proper condition to receive a projectile. Uh, and in some cases you may end up expanding, but not as much as you normally would with other machines. At minimum, we wanna ensure that our uh, case mouth is round and free of any dings or nicks. So you can use a mandrel type die to reform that. Uh, we wanna avoid uh, deformed cases like, uh, like you see here that may not interface with the bullet uh, seating uh, quite the same. The pneumatic bullet dropper is offered in a rifle configuration as well as a pistol configuration. The five components you see in front of each dropper are the caliber specific pieces you will need to change out depending on your projectile and caliber. From left to right, we have our IR uh, switch, which is dependent on the uh, diameter of the projectile. We have the RAM, which is dependent on the diameter as well as the height of the projectile. We have our die, which is dependent on the caliber or uh, medium pistol, medium rifle, that kind of thing. We have our adapter, which is uh, change out depending on your projectile uh, dimensions. And we have our seat rod, which is caliber dependent, much like small pistol, small rifle, so on. To convert one of these to, uh, from one designation to the other, for example, from small pistol to medium pistol or large rifle to medium rifle, we would need to change out these individual components. To do so with our IR uh, bullet sensor, we can just unscrew our set screw at the base of the sensor and remove the whole assembly. Change that out. To change out our adapter, we will loosen the two set screws on the side of the adapter, like so, to lift the entire uh, gate uh, adapter out of the housing. To change out our die, we would change out the die in the tool head. To change out our RAM, we need to remove the RAM solenoid. I've already loosened these four screws. The 
The pneumatic bullet dropper is compatible with a wide range of projectiles and calibers. Although keep in mind, you may need to change out, for example, the RAM and adapter, even within the same caliber, depending on your projectile dimensions. Now, if you have any questions about compatibility, reach out to Mark 7 Reloading so we can fill you in.